This is one of the earlier areas in the game, and so we wanted to make some that were a little bit more gimme, so we put things like exploding barrels to help make them take them out easier. And you can see I just unlocked a perk. And so the perks are the idea that Sean is this, he's a predefined action hero, but we wanted the player playing the way that they want to play the game to improve Sean's skills as they play through it. So I've taken out two of these installations, and that improves Sean's planting speed. And so we'll go into the main interface, I'll jump over here. So there's three layers to all of these different perks in the game, and the first ones are almost gimmies. Like, you're going to get them, literally, by just playing the game. And, the, and that we wanted that to kind of get the player into the system. But as the player kind of progresses, they become a lot harder, uh, but your rewards become much better. So the idea is that here, like this next one, do the, the uh, destroy 10 Nazi towers. It's definitely harder, and you're focusing only on towers rather than just kind of general occupation. So if you did that, but you get to carry more explosives. And I brought, I brought a sniper rifle here because... Uh, sniping perk is another easy one I can show. So if I kill five Nazis just using the scope, it'll reduce my drift. Like I said, Sean's not a soldier by nature, so we want to uh, improve his skills. So we'll jump on. The, it created a little suspicion ring down there on the mini-map, which you can see it in yellow. And that, um, if you're seen in those areas, Sean will, the suspicion will start filling up and Sean will start getting in trouble and they'll start chasing him. So you've got to be careful to not stick around in those areas for too long. So let's see. And one way you could go, you could use the shops like I did to get gear. You could just go around if you needed a sniper rifle, like hanging out in the, you know, taking out these guys in the sniper towers here. It, there's some drift on the scope right now because, like I said, Sean's not a soldier and he's got to get better at using this stuff. So I took that guy out. So you could go around getting sniper rifles from those guys. It's another one way to get gear. Uh, you'll get a lot of the better gear from the shops, though, so it is to your advantage. Uh, another type of target is these crate, this crate here, which is a supp resistance supply crate. Inside of there was contraband, so there's that bottle that fell out there, so we picked that up. So there's a bottle of vodka, and it conver gets converted essentially into the contraband value, uh, so you can use it later. And then those ones will also drop off some random supplies, the stuff that you've unlocked inside of the game. So take out this tower. Sean now plants about 30% faster than he did, so he's a little bit better of a saboteur. We'll hop over here. So those guys are getting suspicious of me up there. So what I can do is I'll just start shooting at them. I'll take those guys out. That's a spot that I'll, another one of those targets I want to blow up is this AA gun. You could do the kind of escape the bubble kind of GTA style, um, but that's, it's in an occupied city, it's often pretty hard. So we have hiding spots, like this is one of the hiding spots in the game, but I can't use it because somebody can see me. It's that guy up there in the tower. This machine gun won't help take him out, but uh, actually it'll help. I can show something else. Run up here. Uh, one of the types of targets in the game, these ambient occupation targets, is the, these sniper, or these uh, AA guns, which is one of my favorite targets because you can take them and use them against the occupation. If you don't take these things out in the game when, at like level three alarms, they'll, uh, the people will jump in them and start firing them down at you. So it is another thing; it's to your advantage to take these things out. You want to clear this occupation out of the world. Take this one more out. Zap one there. And then, so when you take them out, and then you want to blow them up. So like I said, they'll never bother you again. This stuff's persistent in the game. You'll get contraband as your reward, but then like the other reward is literally that it's not going to shoot at you anymore. Pull out of that machine gun out here. Um, I do have it in God mode right now because I uh, definitely don't want to die during this demo. But it'll let me show you a lot of the different things. The game is actually much harder than I'm actually probably making it look. Um, let me kill another couple guys with the gun here. Oh. So I unlocked another perk. This is one you'll get really early in the pro or late in the prologue of the game, but early in the game. Uh, so just killing five guys, it'll reduce the recoil of the gun so it's not kicking up as much on me. Um, and then we'll go back to the sniper rifle here, and you can see there's a little bit of drift with it. So we'll shoot that guy. Ooh, hit him in the knee. I'm terrible with sniper rifles. Oh, come on. One more. Oh, maybe not. Maybe there's one more I gotta get. There's some guys looking around down there. They don't know where I'm at. There we go. So unlocked another perk. This so this one is uh, this one again. Like it was, I said, it was pretty easy. But the next level of it requires you to kind of create little like macro objectives for yourself. So you can kind of create little gameplay situations for yourself. Like. So the next one requires 15 headshots, and so that requires you to kind of think a little bit more about getting that perk. But you get the reduced recoil, so it won't kick up as much when you fire. And then ultimately, the perks you can unlock what we call the terror scoped sniper rifle, which is a pretty awesome gun. We have these these guns for the terror squads in our game, which are these super armored soldiers that are really awesome. 
and it, they have their own set of weapons that we made. You'll see the resistance are fighting down there. Uh, that they show up in the color areas. Not a lot of them do, so it's not like completely get out of jail free card to go to the color areas. But uh, it is a reason why you want to go through and upgrade the resistance in the game. Another reason is let me slide down this drain pipe here. So one reason is like so in the like I was mentioning, I'm in God mode right now. Um, if I died, I would lose all my firearms and, and go back to the headquarters in the game. So, you know, you do want to be careful. You can't just go out and farm the world because one of the best ways to get a terror squad weapon in this game is by pushing up the alarms in the game and they'll show up and fight and start attacking you. So the resistance are showing up. They're definitely a lot heavier armored. So they'll make a bigger difference than they normally could have. Um, you can use that as a, you know, just bring in some buddies to help you out or just use it as a diversion to kind of get away from a situation. So we can use it to... See if they're coming. Oh, he's trying to get up to help me, but we're gonna run away from him and let him finish that fight out for me. Uh, so I'm gonna crash through this checkpoint over here. These are uh, Paris is divided into these three different districts in our game, and that's one of the checkpoints in our game. You can, so they're kind of like soft barriers, and you'll get papers to go through them. Right now, obviously, they're not gonna ask for my papers because they want to shoot me. But uh, it's uh, it's definitely what we, we divided the city. They're like these soft barricades though that you can you know get through whenever you really want. By, but just pushing up the alarms. Another thing is, like I was saying, we're kind of this fantasy of the war, and so we have these uh, these Gestapo cars, which I like in the game because they have mounted uh, airplane can cannons on them, which you can use as you drive around in the world. Let me put it in first person here, so you can see them firing them. Things like that tank over there will now start shooting at me at level three escalation. So again, like as you push the alarms up and up and up, bigger, heavier units will start chasing you around. Uh, so like the APCs have started showing up level four things like the zeppelins that fly around in the world will chase you around on the rooftops um, And then the terror squads will start showing up at level five You'll end up getting things like planes will strafe on the buildings on at you Tanks will show up in the streets and then out of those APCs nothing but terror squad soldiers will show up So it definitely makes them a lot tougher um, This is what we call fight back zone in the game and they're kind of like a, it's like the ability of having like a paint and spray in a way but the idea is they're all combat driven. So you hang out here, fight alongside of the resistance and push back the alarms with them. They're also a cool place where you can like run up and the gear that you've unlocked for the resistance will show up inside of these crates. And so you can get access to some guns that you might need or if you need some grenades or something like that. These only show up at the high level of alarms, but they're really part of the fantasy of fighting alongside of the resistance in our game. Vehicles you can see will have little different weak spots. You can hit those fuel tanks. It's one way to help take them out a lot faster in the game. But you take out, you know, all the big, you take out enough Nazis, what that does is it push the alarms back and then the resistance cheer you on as the, you guys have, you know, fought back against the Nazis. So that's just like kind of the pure sandbox loop of the game. You can do it in the missions, outside of the missions. You know, it is something that's just a, it's just a general like kind of fun that you can have inside of the sandbox world.